Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another tutorial, which will be how to create this chain using GeoNodes, or any chain you actually choose, which you'll be able to change on the fly by the way, and also, best of all, how to actually animate it really easily and quickly. This then you'll be able to take through to your own games engines or render it out in Blender. First off though, just to let you know about our new schedule, every Monday we'll be releasing a new tutorial probably based on the actual scenes we've created for the week before. And every Tuesday and Thursday will be how we created a scene. Tomorrow, for instance, will be a scene of a spooky graveyard, which of course we'll be creating in Blender and then sending out through to Unreal, where we'll be adding things like fog, foliage, and atmosphere and things like that. Now, I'm not gonna show you the spooky graveyard, but what I can show you is Thursday's release, which is actually a floating stylized crystal tower. And this is just a small glimpse of what it's actually gonna look like in Blender. But trust me, once we get through to Unreal Engine, we're really gonna play around with the sky and mountains and things like that. Also, every Tuesday and Thursday, every scene will come with its own modular download pack, which you can grab if you go over to our Gum Road, or you can grab it for free if you head on over to our Patreon, where the links, of course, will be down below. So with all that said, let's get started with Geometry Nose Chain and Animation. Now, if you can't be bothered to make your own chain or you want to support the channel, then check out the links down below where there will be an actual blend file available to download. So first things first, let's actually create our chain. So the way I'm going to do it, I used to do it with toruses, but now the best way to do it is actually through using curves. So if you come to your curve menu, come down, you'll have one that says circle. Let's move our circle over at the moment because we don't want it in the center because that's where I'm actually going to put the chain. So if I press shift space bar, come to my move tool and then just move it over here, something like that. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to my actual curve data and what I'm doing is I'm just going to open that up and first of all I'm going to turn down the amount of resolution so if I turn this down and then bring it up slightly this will depend on how stylized you want it or how realistic you want it of course but I'm going to put mine on four for now next of all I'm going to head on over to my geometry and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down bring up where it says depth here so bring this up and now you can already see we get in um, the idea of a chain. Now if I squish this in now, so if I press S and X and bring it in like so, you can see now that's looking pretty much um, like a stylized chain or something like that. Next of all, I'm just gonna bring down this resolution by three. You can see here that this is affecting this side of the chain. So just make sure that you can see that and make sure you're happy with it. If you bring it down to three, you can see you keep the most chain-like look while actually keeping the resolution. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create our chain based on a geometry node, which means that we can change this and the geometry node will change in real time. So let's first of all bring in another curve, so shift A, curve, bring in a Bezier curve, and there we go. This is what we're going to use to base this on. I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit, so press S and scale it up a little bit like so. Now let's head on over to our Geometry Nodes panel, which is this one there. Let's click New, and let's call this Chain, like so. Now the first thing I want to do once I've opened this up is I want this to actually be part of the Geometry Node because I want to be able to change this, and the Geometry Nodes changes. So what I want to do is I want to come over to my Chain. I'm just gonna name it Chain Link like so, and then I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to bring it into my geometry node. So if we come back to our Bezier curve, now grab your chain link, grab it, drop it in, and you'll get one that says object info. And now if I grab this geometry and plug that into this geometry, you'll see that actually changes to this actual link, which is exactly what we want. So the next node I want to bring in is shift A, search, and I'm going to bring in a instance on point. So type in instance, and you'll see one that says instance on point and just drop that in there. Next of all, we want to obviously um, unplug this object info from the points. And what I want to do is I want to plug that into where it says instance. So if I grab the geometry, plug it into where it says instance like so. Next, we're gonna make use of this actual group input. I'm gonna put curve to point. So shift A, search curve to, hopefully points, let's find that. So curve to points, which is this one here. All right, so now we can plug this geometry node into my curve and then plug my points into my points of my instance and you will end up with something like this and basically what it's trying to do is it's trying to put a actual um, chain link over each one of these points now we don't really want it on cam what we want it to do is fit the length of the actual curve so if i bring this down and put it to length 
And then what you can do is you can turn this down now or turn it up and you will end up with something much, much better. You can also see at the moment that the scale on this is um, way out. So we need to really turn that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this top one, hold the left mouse, pull it down, and then I'll put these on 0 0.1 or something like that. And now you can see that's looking much, much better. And now as I pull these out, as you can see, very slowly, you can see that they're trying to interlock together. Now you can see at the moment that these links are round and this link isn't round. And the reason for that is because we've not reset our transformation. So if I come into this link, press Control A or Transforms, you'll see now that these end up looking the shape of this. Then what you want to do is right click, set origin to geometry. And there we go. Now we're back where we actually um, started. But the links are looking much, much, much nicer. What I want to do is we want to join the geometry. So we can't actually see our curve right now. Um, and that's important that we actually are able to see that. So what I want to do is I want to pull this over. I want to press Shift A. And what I'm looking for is join geometry. So join geometry, drop that in there. And now if I pull this over and plug that in, now you can actually see your curve. And best of all, if I come and click on this curve, press the tab one to go into edit mode, grab the end point up here, not these two points here, just the middle one, press E. You can see now we can actually create this curve a little bit longer. So now you can see you can create this as long as you actually want and best of all in any direction that you want. So that's exactly what we're going for. All we need to do now is actually fix the chain so it actually follows that correctly. Now you want to do is use this actual curve to points and you can see that we've actually got a rotation because you can see at the moment these are not rotating along the actual um, spline or curve properly. So what I want to do is I want to come to rotation and plug that into the rotation here. And now you can see that they're actually following this correctly, albeit they're at the actual wrong rotation. What we need to do now is we need to actually transform these from this object info just to make sure that they're always going in the right rotation around our actual curve. So what I'll do is I'll press shift A and bring in a transform like so, and then I'll just drop that in there. And now what that does is that gives us the ability now to actually rotate these round however we actually want to and get them facing the correct way. Obviously, if you're transforming these, you want to put these on actual 90 because then that is turning it around the correct way, as you can see. Just make sure that your links are actually following along. As you can see here, mine are following really nicely along. The one problem we've got is they don't look like they're actually interlocking at the moment, and that's something I need to see. Fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the length. I'm going to pull it left and right. I'm going to hold the shift button then, and then I'm just going to pull it really slowly just to get a little bit of a gap there. So when I rotate these round, then they're actually going to interlock. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So something like that for now. And then when we turn each other one of these round, you'll see that they actually interlock. Now, each one of these chain links is assigned a position. Um, we don't need to know which one it is because they'll be in the hundreds if you've got a really long chain. But all we need to know is which one is an even number and which one is an odd number so that we can turn every odd number or every even number around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and pull this down here and then I'm going to bring in a index. The index is basically which is telling this what numbers each one of these is. So all I need to do is use that index to say every odd or every even one. So I'm going to press shift A, come to search, look for index and drop that in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a math node. So search, bring in a math node, and I'm looking for on my math node something called Medulo. And that's basically going to make sure it's every other one. So if I come down to Medulo, like so, and then I plug in my index to the value. And now what I want to do is just move this over to the left hand side. I'm going to read a rotation instance. So if I press Shift A, go to search, put in rotate, and you'll have one that says rotate instances. Drop that in there like so, nothing will happen. But as soon as I plug in my Medulo to my selection, move this Z to 90 degrees. So click on the Z, type in 90, and then just put the value of the Medulo on two. And that then will make sure that every other part of the, every other one of these links is actually turned around. And now the best thing is, I'm gonna go over to my modeling, and I'm going to show you how we can actually change this. So first of all, if I come in and let's say I want to change the, let's say I want to pull this bit out. So if I press G and pull this bit out, you can see that I can actually change this on the actual fly, which is the best thing. We can also come over and turn up the resolutions to be much, much more realistic or less realistic, depending on what you want. So I'm just going to turn this down to something like four. In fact, let's go further down. I'll show you what I mean. And there you go on the fly. 
But better than that, what we can do is if we come to our actual chain, press tab so you're actually into the actual curve mode, press A to grab everything and just press delete and vertices. And now you'll say, well, it's disappeared. Yes, but over on the left hand side, this actual bezier curve is still there, which means I can come over now to the left hand side where the grease pencil is and I can draw in my actual chain. Now we've got our chain how we want it, let's say, apart from the fact that I don't want to use this chain because it's a little bit too long and that's going to make it a little bit hard for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to press delete vertices. I'm going to press seven to go over the top. I'm going to come again with my grease pencil. I'm going to draw in another chain like so. I'm going to come back to where it says the move tool here. And then what I'm going to do now, I want to divide this so I've actually got something. I just want to bend it a little bit. And as you can see, at the moment, I've got, I think, three splines on here and I don't really want that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press A, subdivide and now I should end up with another one right in the center and now what I can do is I can put proportional editing on which is this button here, bring it down and just bend my chain a little bit and the reason I'm showing you this is because most of the time you're not going to end up with a perfectly straight chain to actually animate on so I'm just going to put it like this. Now once you're actually happy with your chain there is one more thing that you actually need to do. If I now try and convert this into mesh it's not going to work so if I come up to object come down to convert, come down to mesh, you'll see that actually disappears. And that's because we need to add one more node to our actual geometry node setup. So if we come over to the right hand side, just before we're joined geometry and group output is, what we need to do is press shift A and you need to realize, realize instances. We must make sure that we've dropped this node in between there and then it will all come over and it'll basically change it into actual mesh for us. Now, if I come over, to where my um, object is, come down, convert to mesh, and now you'll see we actually have our mesh all done the way that we wanted it. All right, so let's now go back to modeling. Um, let's actually delete this chain out of the way. I'm not going to need it. And now actually let's move on to the actually animating part of the actual chain. So what first of all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into my chain. I'm going to press tab and I'm going to grab just one of the actual uh, vertices over here. So grab this one, press shift S, cursor to selected. That makes sure then when I bring my first bone in, it's actually going to come over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift A, come down and bring in a armature, which is this one here. Press the S button to scale it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it over and put it on the bottom of here. So if I grab the top of here, press shift space bar, bring the move tool, bring it over, bring it down and over and just make sure it's right in the uh, top where we actually want it. And now what I want to do is we actually want to grab our bone and what we want to do is we want to right click and subdivide a few times. So maybe something like that. You can actually get away with subdividing it a lot more than that, but I'm going to leave it on that for now. And now when I grab this one, I can actually start pulling all these down. I don't really need proportional editing on if I just gets in the way. So what I'm all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press three and just start bringing these down into place, following that actual chain like so and you can see the more actual bones you have on here the easier it is to actually animate this so if i bring this amount in and then i'll just make sure they're leveled up there so if i grab them and just pull them over to the way that the chain's going like so and then what i can do is i can show you that once you have those in place just making sure they're all level so over oops, over here like so a little bit over and then this one a little bit over and this one a little bit over like so. And now you can do is you can press A, right click and subdivide. And you can see now they're all in place and you've got a lot of actual um, bones to actually work with. All right. So once we've done that, then we actually need to make these links actually work. So how do we actually do that? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the end up here and I'm going to press E and Y and pull it along. Obviously it's X if it's going the other way or something like that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna grab this one and I wanna press Alt P and I wanna disconnect the bone. So now if I grab this bone and I press G, it should actually be disconnected, but with an actual line on there like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over to the right hand side. I'm gonna to go to where this little bone is. I'm gonna rename this bone to IK. Just rename everyone. If you've got a few changes, just make sure the N one is always renamed to the IK. And now what you're going to do is you're going to head on over to the left hand side here where it says edit mode, go down and you're going to go to pose mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this bone, the next bone down from our IK. 
And I forgot one thing actually, make sure that on your eye case, let's go back to edit, make sure that this deform is actually ticked off in edit mode. I'm not sure if you need, if you can do that in pose mode, just make sure it's ticked off because we don't actually want this bone to actually deform anything. We want these bones to do the deforming. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on this bone, go to pose mode, and then come over to the right hand side where you've got your actual add bone constraints. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come, click on add bone constraint, and you want to click on the inverse kinematics. The target is going to be our actual um, armature. So if you just click on object armature, and then the bone that we're going to um, look for, if you scroll down, you'll see you've got one called IK. Now, if you grab this end bone, you can see that you should be able to move your chain round like so. So I'm just gonna press Control Z and put that back there. And now what I want to do is I just want to come here and I just want to make sure that um, my cursor is actually here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to object mode, press tab, come to this one here, press shift S, cursor selected, and now we're gonna bring in another actual bone. So if I press shift A, bring in a bone, I'm gonna grab it, make it a little bit bigger with the S button like so. Let's move it up. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab this one, Shift select this bone, control P, and keep offset. And now hopefully, if I go to pose mode, grab this bone here, press the G button, you can see now how easy that is. And you can see that the reason I did that is because if I just grab this one and try and move it, it flicks all over the place. And now we've got a real nice control, really nice and smooth. Now we've done it like that. So now what I want to do is I want to basically grab in object mode, my chain, grab my armature, press control P and come down where it says with automatic weights. And now what you'll find is if you go to pose mode, grab this part here, press the G button. Now you can actually move your chain really nice and easily and it will be animated really well. Now the thing is before you actually finish to send this through to something like Unreal Engine for instance, make sure that you rename the armature to anything apart from what it's called at the moment because there is a bug where when you try and send this through it's not actually going to work correctly all right everyone all right everyone so that's actually going to do it for today i hope you enjoyed that and if you check out the links down below you will see now we have 250 hours of courses available to all our patreons for free and don't forget guys if you're having trouble with this then there is a blend file available, so just check out the links down below. And don't forget, out tomorrow is the graveyard full scene guide. And as always, happy modeling, everyone. <laughs>